We'll sign in on the agenda. Carolyn, you want to start? For sign in. Oh. Oh. Oh, Roll yes. Call. Hello. Carolyn is here. Hi, Diane Martin. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I, mean, I didn't know where you meant. I'm sorry. I'm like, what? <laughs> Uh, I'm really uh, not here. <laughs> and I, I presume Jay is not going to join us tonight just simply because he's, he's still taking care of his wife. And, um, okay, we've got none of the friends at Deerfield have signed on yet, so maybe they'll join us. Yeah. Um, all right. So are there any other uh, agenda items that anybody wants to add that aren't on the current agenda? I don't think so. I'd like to add one. I, I did uh, about the mural. I've got a little bit of update on, on the mural. So I'll just put that in as new business. OK. That's from Judith on Glazy. Um, first order of business is approving the minutes from May 23rd. Any corrections, additions, no. deletions? Somebody could make a motion. I motion. I motion we accept the minutes of the May twenty third meeting. As and I and I will um, second that. All right. All those in favor? Hi, Dan. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Peter. All okay. right. That carries. Next item on the agenda was the time capsule update. Uh, I have no idea where it is, Peter. Well, I've been asking people. Here's the thing. I went through, George Melnick was the chair of the 300th. And there's a whole folder at PVMA of his notes and minutes of the meetings. And I went through it all. And there's no mention of a time capsule in those minutes or his notes. And there was never a committee appointed in terms of dealing with a time capsule. So I'm, I think there's a pretty good chance there really was never a time capsule for the 300th. If it is, it was an afterthought because everything for that 300th closed in July. There were no events after that. So, if it's out there, um, I had a look uh, at the uh, space next to that uh, uh, reconciliation monument that's out there in, in, the, in the front lawn of the uh, library, Tilton Library. And there's plenty of space to put a time capsule in there right next to it. So whether we, you know, whether we decide that now or not, I mean, I think that's it. It's a, it's a perfectly usable space, and and it's one that's already sort of memorializing other things. I I felt like we would be burying the time capsule somewhere by the library because they're going to be digging up the library anyway. You know. Well, so, they have the equipment there, so they can just. Yeah. Take a bucket loader and just scoop right. a hole and right. Yeah. Okay. And so we can plant something by it and whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um. So I, I yeah I think we should definitely that would be where we would probably want it to go and um they will you be wait for ground. a full committee meeting be, to. The, I think they're going to be breaking ground in the fall. So to me that's about the time frame we would want anyway. So um I and we can document it with the library breaking ground and we're, we're gonna definitely have to do something so that people are aware where it is because this is ridiculous. Well one of the things that we yeah but what I mean we'll have that in our minutes so that they won't and <laughs> they it, it won't go unnoticed later on. But one of the things that is is useful is since we have this monument there already, a stone monument, what we can do is bury it so many feet south of the, of the existing monument, it should be a piece of cake to find. Yeah, I, I just, 
I feel like such a dud calling people. Do you know anything about the 300th time capsule? I mean, people really don't know. So maybe you're correct, Peter. Well, maybe they're just maybe never they one. maybe they don't know for a good reason. <laughs> There's a lot of drinking that year. <laughs> huh? Yeah, the world is a lot of drinking. Maybe it was a few <laughs> beer cans they buried. Who knows? But uh, that's what everyone says is there was so much alcohol involved in the three hundredth that maybe no one knows where the capsule is. That was the only. That's the only complaint I've heard about our um, celebration. Is the three fiftieth is a lot less alcohol free than yeah. uh, the three hundredth. <laughs> I'm like. Well, liability, liability, liability. Different time. Different time, I know. Oh, well. So, so why don't we just hold off until we have a full committee meeting and we can just formally vote on it to, to do it. Yeah, I, I agree. And we'll just keep asking people. Somebody might know. Um, everyone keeps saying that Ed Crafts will know, but Ed Crafts. Ed Crafts has been dead for years. Ed, I know. So poor Ed, if to dig him up and ask him, seance, where did you put the 300th yeah. time capsule? Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, item in here. This is tables for local groups at the 350th events. Well, um, Valley um, Neighbors has asked me that they wanted a table in the after parade events. And I said, well, I didn't think that was gonna be a problem because you know people are gonna be interested in, and just floating around and waiting for food and enjoying the after actions, you know, after a parade stuff. So, um, but I didn't know where we wanted them to be located. And, you know, this is, uh, they're a good group, obviously they're helping our seniors by quite a bit. And um, we're, so, doing, we're having it over at the grammar school, so why not? Yeah, so have, if, uh, if that's okay with the rest of the committee, I, yeah. I didn't know if you thought if that was the, the best location, but I think it is. Well, um, it seems to be where people are going to be going. Right, and it's I, I don't feel like anywhere along the parade route is appropriate, and there and people aren't going to move that way. They're just whereas at, at the after parade events they'll be floating around and if you're looking for volunteers which is the whole purpose of this table is is volunteers for you know to help our seniors then you know it would be great to have people you know um take their literature and maybe volunteer so um i mean i think along the parade route is people are going to be watching the parade rather than right Right, and, and I just there's wasn't not going to be the movement. Either. I mean, people are going to find their places right. on the street and stay there. I would right. guess. So, the, the, it would seem to me the movement of people is going to be to the grammar school. And right, you know. I I, think, I agree. So I'll just what I would like us to do though is is have more direction, Peter. Maybe when we get towards that week, is just tell them, um, or maybe friends of Deerfield can. Could talk, tell us what the setup is, and then where they would like uh, the valley neighbors to set their table up. Yeah, I, I, I was assuming that they'll have a table with merchandise, you know, friends of Deerfield merchandise, um, you know, like the glasses and would the seem reasonable. Yeah, sure. So I figured they could just put a yeah. table up next to yeah. that group, you know, their their table. You know, one of the things we might want to do is just put a note on our webpage to say, you know, if organizations would like to set up a table during the, uh, you know, post parade event, um, you know, they, they're welcome to do it. Well, I think they should still come to us, Peter. No, I do. At least I you, do. or at but, least you, so that you have, you know who it is. I mean, Valley Neighbors is legit. And it, it's, you know, to help our seniors age in place. So it's like a good organization, but you don't want somebody that's less savory um, setting up without, I mean, you kind of want to just, it's like the waivers. We certainly are not, we never turn down a waiver request from Holly for the parade, but you, in this day and age, you can't just give a blanket waiver. 
you have to, you know, we want to know who it is that we're wavering. I, I was thinking more in, organ, in terms of organizations rather than individuals, but mm -hmm. the, um, no, that's fine. Uh, maybe what I can do if, if, if some, if Chris or uh, Stan come on, yeah. is just to work it out with them, where would they like to have it? And um, if, if they just have to reserve space and people can contact me, sure, if they want. Okay. I, I think that's what we should do. I'm taking some notes here. All right. Um, next item on here is post parade event update. Uh, do we, is Sue on at all? I haven't seen her. No, um, I haven't seen her too either. Um, that's us. I don't believe there were any items left hanging last time that the post parade to that weren't already addressed. Well, there, I think there was some, I think Kevin had sorted out the trash or yeah. Chris Miller had sorted out Chris the trash. Had, yeah. That was the big thing. Yeah. And I think it's going to be late enough, but they were going to take a week, just the week before this. So it'll be sometime next week just to check out the lighting, what time we're going to lose some light. But I, my sense is that if it's in that side yard, if it's not behind the school, you're also going to have street lights. Yeah. And I and I don't I don't see that yeah. we've got a lighting issue. I I don't either, Peter. I think um, if you if you even even when we have cloudy days, you know, it's still pretty light till 8.30ish, nine, quarter nine. Oh, 8.30 so. easily. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, Holly should be on. So why don't I go on to the history working group? Um, I'm still working on my talk for Deerfield on the Pocumtuk, but it's coming along. And that's going to be on July 6, 7 o'clock at night in Old Deerfield. They have to decide which auditorium they're going to use. It'll probably be on the academy. They're not going to do it at the. Uh, what, what day is that again, Peter? July 6. July 6, okay. At 7, 8, 7 p.m. Apparently the community room that they, the old white church that they used to use for talks, the, uh, they've restricted the number of people that can be in there at any one time. They've lowered it from what it used to be. And I know when I've given talks there before, they've had to turn people away. So they're looking at changing the venue and it'll probably be in one of the auditoriums at the academy. Um, that's a Thursday. So that's, yep. that's a different date than the Sunday this, we've been having. That's because this is the historic Deerfields summer lecture series. Oh, 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 okay. So I'm going to be giving one and then Marge, Colin Calloway will give it the next Thursday and Marge Bruchak will give another talk the following Thursday. Okay. All right, that's good. Um, do you have any, do you have a date? Oh, Pat, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, Sue, what? Sue Antonella said that she's at a baseball championship, so she won't be tuning in. Okay. Oh, she's, she has to give out trophies tonight. <laughs> oh, no, well, that's a good excuse. Um, so, Peter, do you do you know um, what, do you have any more lecture series over the summer? Not over the summer, in the fall. Okay, so the next the fall ones are when do you start up in the fall? 
I'll do one in September, October, and November, probably. Oh, good. Okay. The, I, I have to say those are pretty popular, I think, it seemed like. Well, good. I mean. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's going. <laughs> no, but people, like there's quite a few people that showed up. Yeah. No, they did. I mean. Yeah. And I, I'm, I suspect that as time goes on, people are going to be more aware of talks in the past and may, may actually come as well. But they're pretty well advertised. I mean, they're Historic Deerfield, PVMA, us, Historic Northampton are all sending out notices of the talks to the to their you know constituents. Yeah, I mean, I have to say most of them are older people, but it's still there is a still mix, oh, a little this. bit of a mix. Yes, Diane. It compares to learning in retirement the classes that they have in South Hadley that are, you know, a little far away. We have our learning and retirement classes. It's a whole series about Deerfield, which I find rather interesting. You find a whole bunch of tidbits you never knew. Well, I have to tell you, after listening um, to Gary Sanderson, I was poking up North Main Street, looking at all the houses. It was really interesting. Yeah. It makes you have a different, um, attitude on some of the what you're driving by so yeah i think that'll that'll improve even more i i just got a a uh, um an email uh from a callahan and his family as you might expect is from ireland and i have two turn of the century photographs of his two family houses in south deerfield Oh, how cool is that? And with people standing out there, and he actually could name them. So uh, I'm going to get some high resolution pictures and go do an interview with him. He's only in his 90s. <laughs> well, there, there so, are some really interesting people. You know, um, I, I had said that Blake Gilmore has a lot of uh, memorabilia he was going to donate for the display at the town hall. But also, I think he and um, you know, has was so active during the 300th as a kid. And then, um, you know, he was filming it and doing all kinds of stuff because his dad was so involved. I, I think we should in, interview somebody like that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just need names and their willingness to do it. It's, I think after the parade and stuff, both Marie and I are going to be breathing a little easier, although I'm just about to introduce something else that may put that back even further, but. Um, oh, no. Oh, you mean the fall thing? Yeah. Uh, wow. So I was talking, I've been talking to um, Jean Soika, Alex's mom uh, at PVMA, who is also. That's his mother? Yeah. Oh. So. She's also the vice president of the Polish um, Genealogical Society in Massachusetts. So she's well connected out there in the in the Polish community. And PVMA really wants to update their uh, webinar and other materials in terms of the Eastern European immigrants. So she's written a large grant, and I just wrote a finish the support letter for. Her. But we got to talking and I think we could pull off a two day harvest and heritage festival in October. Um, I think that's fantastic because all I remember years ago was what PVMA was doing um, in the interviews of the Polish um, immigrants uh, yeah. families. And it was very, very interesting. And I, I think that this would be a fantastic follow-up. Well, we've, we've not, we're in the process or Jean's in the process right now of contacting some people that she knew to, to see whether they would be available for that particular time slot or whatever. So, None of this is confirmed, but we're 
I've got a whole bunch of things that are of possibilities. I, I'm just going to read them off just so you can see the where we were, our heads were kind of going. So we'd have October 14th would be Saturday, and then we'd do it on the 15th and Sunday. So the Saturday might be Saturday, this would be Saturday afternoon, like 12 to 5, something like that. And this would be at PVMA. But Polish cultural and craft speakers and demonstrations, Polish genealogy, amber and Polish items for sale, family activities, Ellis Island immigration program, displays of Eastern European immigrant photographs and artifacts, local produce from area farmers like the Czeslicks and Galenskis. Uh, and then we can have some food kind of stuff. And I think if I can figure out how to, how to fit it in, we ought to try and, and at least recognize the German and the immigrant and the Irish immigrant parts of the population. If we can immigrate, integrate them into this, um, I think that'd be great. And then Sunday, like from one to four at Frontier. So we do don't we do one up there, do one down here on Sunday. Program will feature Polish and Ukrainian folk dancers. Um, she suggested a guy named uh, Paul, uh, James Pula, who could speak on the Kosciuszko Squadron. So it was an airplane squadron that created after World War I, and then its role in helping to win the Battle of Britain. She said she's heard a speech that he's given before. It's absolutely wonderful. And we can display Eastern European or other immigrant photos and artifacts and have refreshments in the afternoon. And that's that's probably where I would give a talk on just the background of the immigrant communities in Deerfield from the 1850s on through. And they can you can talk about the German and the Irish and, and the Eastern European uh, populations coming in. Yeah, no, that sounds fine. I, I think that's very exciting, Peter. I would be happy because um, that's why I was so thrilled that um, Treehouse was willing to do the half marathon mm -hmm. in the fall because it felt like we weren't, you know, we're, we're stretching out. We wanted to stretch out the whole calendar celebration. So this is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, once we get to the holidays, nobody really wants to do stuff and it gets cold. But um, yeah, I, well, I think, I think it, this why, is... By October, I think we're, we're usually pretty good. First yep. couple of weeks in October, so and the fall seemed to be getting warmer for some reason. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We we have mosquitoes for longer and longer. We're trying to beat up. Um, I'm a mosquito commissioner, and um, we're trying to beat up DPH to keep testing through October because the frost doesn't come now until end of September or October. We, and that's when you have the most disease load is at the end of your mosquito season. So, you know, usually um, DPH has been stopping uh, testing mosquitoes after Labor Day. And it's like, that's no one, no, you don't have frost anymore by Labor Day. You know, people are yeah. fine right up through October almost now. So. Anyway. Yeah, I was picking I was picking vegetables into November two years ago in Vermont, northern Vermont. So <laughs> I know. I know. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. But our shoulder seasons are, you know, warmer and longer now. And so yeah, yeah no, I agree a hundred percent. So we so, we should be fine. I, this is very exciting, Peter. Well, I talked to Chris earlier, and he's game and the Friends of Deerfield end of it to see if they can raise some some funds there. And I just talked to Hank Yastrzemski, um, who's on the board of uh, Jablonski. Jablonski, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'll get it one of these days. Uh, anyway, he he was he's positive, and he wants to uh, when we've got a more together program. But I just wanted to put it out there tonight just to get a sense that, yeah, okay, that it's going to work somehow. Yes. Uh, we had support from the steering committee. So We're definitely I, um, I don't think we need a, a vote or anything, but I just, when we. No, I, I think there's consensus, right, Diane? I mean, I think that's oh, fantastic. Uh, let me know when I want to be part of it. I want to be yep. part of okay. that. So Gene right now is contacting some of the dance troops and some of the other folks 
that I mentioned to see if they would be available. And so I think by the 26th, which is our next meeting, we should have that pretty much in hand. I may, if we have it earlier, I may just send the, out a, a proposed uh, type of agenda to, or, or proposed um, schedule to the steering committee before the meeting, and then we can discuss it at the meeting if we want. But if people are available, I think we're going to need to be able to tell Gene yes by the the end of June because she's going to have to get them scheduled and you know have have them agree. And if there's a cost, then we're going to need to vote some budgets. But um, I'll 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 continue to pursue that with her and and Diane if you want to be a regular part of this. Yeah, I'd like her. Um... Gmail, if you could, yeah, at some point connect me in on that one. It's J Soika uh, at. I think it's P. It's the PVMA address. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, because yeah. I was even wondering if that's where we could fit in a tractor parade. Well, yeah. that's possible too. The other thing is that they have an immigrant exhibit at PVMA Museum, so that was one of the other things that. Uh, could be worked into this agenda is they're they're going to open, they they could open up and 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 will be guided tours of the the exhibits that they have as well. So I think that's pretty much. So Holly's just coming on. So. I think Holly, well, there she is. We are, you're, you're on with the parade working group update. <laughs> That's the last item we have on the agenda right now. Say that again, you cut out. We, we've, we've gone through the agenda except for your update, whatever you would like to update us on. There's only okay. there's only uh, Carol and Diane and myself um, president here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're having um, another volunteer meeting tomorrow. Um, hopefully, we're going to have a few more people uh, show up. Um, it seems like a couple of names have popped up, so we're just hoping for. Um, a good contingency. Uh, yesterday, Rocky and I met with the public safety people. Uh, we met with um, Adam from the police department, Kevin from Highway, um, Kurt and Bob Swayze from um, Fire Department, my daughter, Lori McComb from the ambulance. Um, and we just reviewed anything they had questions on and logistics, uh, where they're gonna be situated, uh, the streets they're covering versus where they need volunteers. And um, it's a really cooperative group. So that was a good meeting. Um, we are in the last flurries of, um, let's see, this afternoon, we had a meeting with FCAT about the location of the review stand and the logistics of that and things they need, what they will supply. Um, it was definitely a good meeting. And Kevin Murphy, who's under Jonathan Beauchene, he's gonna be the key person. Um, I think John, John said something to the effect of, he's more of a, um, a moving um, videographer. So he was, a, you know, a better pick for this. Um, we're going to get the layout to FCAT uh, by the end of this week. So they'll be able to start to do the introduction signage. So they'll float that in as they're doing the filming. And um, I, do you guys know, did I tell you where the review stand is? No. It's um, that 
I don't know the gentleman and his wife, but Greg Franceschi. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's a light, light blue house, kitty corner, a little more towards Peter um, across oh, the from the library. So yep. what they're trying to have in the backdrop, you know, looking down the street as they're filming, it'll be the Tilton Library, the church, and the, the brick building, whatever oh, we're calling it. Oh, how nice. These days. Oh, all right. Oh, what a nice background. Yep. Holly, that's a really good choice. Yeah, well, we had talked to them early on, and they wanted to have something good in the backdrop. So, you know, the parade is the parade, but is it's oh. going to be filmed for posterity. Um, they said they will be able to give us a thumb drive whatever that's going to mean to anybody for 50 years from now, we can put it in the time capsule. Let them figure out how to use it. <laughs> this would be so outdated at that point. No kidding. No kidding. But anyway, um, he said, well, they're going to be live streaming the parade and Thank then you. they will immediately put it out so people can watch it if they couldn't live stream it. And then they will do their clean it up version and then have a good copy for posterity. Mm -hmm. um, so um, John and Kevin met with a whole bunch of us today and we kept crossing our fingers because we were outside when all that weather was trying to decide if it was going to happen this afternoon. Um, oh, it's pretty icky. I know. I know some communities, I guess, got hail. We, we yeah. were kind of fortunate here. Um, we were least, up in Greenfield. She said they had snowball size hail. Yeah, we had we had that grapple. You know, it's halfway between snow and ice. Wow! Wow! Yeah, and it's it it's funny. The, the whole time we were down there, the trees were swaying and everything. And I came home, and my driveway is soaking wet. And I'm like, okay, we were lucky. We got our meeting in outside. It was really good. Um, trying to think what else to tell you about. It just seems like everything's in my mind, like a flurry of everything. How's how's the float coming for the select board? Um, Denise Mason and I are going down tomorrow to Jeff Hubbard's and we're going to measure it. And okay. I guess there's like tw about 20 post poster boards. I was just going to ask Diane, like you maybe get her a little grandson to stamp footprints on a <laughs> poster board so we have another poster board we don't have a lot of posters from the kids yet but uh -huh. hopefully you know i told them i needed all the posters by next tuesday so yeah so you've already um, brought everything to the school and they had yeah they they were no they didn't even need anything so yeah, they're, um, they're really good there really oh good. no Catherine is really nice the art teacher and so she's trying to encourage the kids to do, you know, happy birthday scenes from Deerfield. So hopefully yeah. it will be eclectic, you know, a collection of good kids stuff. But yeah, you know, if we have to put the bells on, uh, we maybe we can figure out the bells. It's just I wanted something to pull in kids, you know. So the yeah, no, I, I I like I like the idea. I mean, I think that it makes sense, and if you have to maybe do some window dressing you know for the edges that don't have something but it's still well, that's why is, denise is going to go down with me and we're going to try to figure out how, you know so it's not so boring yeah yeah <laughs> so no we'll have it, to be a little bit fancier and i don't know we'll see it's smaller yeah. it's much smaller than galinsky's 48 foot one so okay so um, how much smaller because there's quite a few of you going to be on it yeah, well, well, it's a hay wagon, so you can certainly get. Oh, know, okay. Yeah, it's I, not. Small I, I, small. I, it's it's not a flatbed. It's a wagon. It's a wagon. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like yeah. that idea. Okay. And, and that way we can hang the posters right off the rails and. Perfect. Perfect. I was going to have Kevin put on the flatbed, put, you know, stakes in, and then run snow fence or something, so people don't get. We're not going to fall off, but. I don't know. We'll have to figure out something. What, Diane? Is it going to have the big metal rails around it? Or? Well, that's what we're going to look at. I don't know how high they are, but um, so we were going to hang the posters at like, you know, the second railing maybe down. Yeah. I, I have plenty of webbing, blue and red webbing. 
I ended up getting colored webbing instead of the like burlap webbing. And yeah, um, yeah, because the burlap, I was worried if you saved it for 50 years, the you know, it might be get wormy or you know, yeah. like crack varmint things. Yeah, and, um, so the webbing it is sealed. And, it, you know, it's like webbing that you use for um, chairs and stuff. So it's sealed and weatherproof. So it should last and not, you know, the storage of the posters should be okay with yeah. that webbing yeah. versus, you know, the more organic burlap stuff, which I had in my mind. So um, if you don't, if you don't get enough um, artwork, because there's going to be our town people, but then our state people as well. Maybe you could use, you know, some of those to just put who's on with you. Well, um, we have um, Denise Mason. She was worried too um, about that. So she got a banner that said Deerfield Select Board. And then there's another banner that does our um, Connecting Communities Initiative, you know, that's our campus. Yep. And um, and then we could we could come up with something else too, I'm sure. Yeah, because um, to our knowledge, because as far as announcing, are all three of you select board gonna be on? Yes, it will be um, uh, Trevor, Tim, and myself. Yep. Um, we have Joe Comerford right. and Natalie Blay. Yep. We have Ashley Randall, the yep. MDAR commissioner, agricultural yep. commissioner. And then um, Dave Sullivan and, and Jim McGovern are right. Okay, so that's that's the solid who we knew about. Yeah. Um, the eight, eight okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, the five, and then you three. Um, anybody else from the town administrative I office? Think, um, I think. Um, well, I think Denise Mason is going to be on there, and um, Lily Dwight. Lily okay. is chair of the senior housing uh -huh. and, and Denise is chair of CCI and the planning board. And the, and the reason why is because we're going to be at least an hour. This sounds terrible, but at least an hour waiting to start the parade and then we'll be through the parade. So the whole point is to keep um, asking Jim McGovern about our, our <laughs> um, you know, earmark. Yeah. A three million captive audience. Yeah, it's then, captive. Then you want captive the audience. Else for, it, so we yeah. can hear <laughs> yeah. Captive audience. Where is our money? <laughs> okay. Oh, so dear. um so we're gonna we're gonna the idea so, was to have Denise and Lily and everybody be talking about what we're trying to do in the center of town. That was why we had the CCI banner too. We wanted to make sure that it was remembered okay. that we had to ask for money. <laughs> okay, so I guess from my perspective, and just saying this out loud, as parade people, we didn't ask other committees. And so our other committees and or boards gonna feel like they weren't looked upon to be part of this. Because I know, uh -huh. I had expressed just a verbal to Casey and Chris because they're part of your staff. If they wanted to, to participate in some way, they were welcome. But th then I'm just, you know, I, obviously I'm gonna go with whatever you want to do, but then some other board or committee might say, well, how come they're up there and we weren't asked? Well, I think the theme is, you know, the connecting community initiative and, um, you know, the theme of what of our of our float is, you know, what we're trying to do in the downtown. OK, um, OK. I mean, that was what the conversation is going to be about. So I think okay. the, I think it's appropriate for both of them. I mean, Denise is chair of the CCI plus chair of the planning board. Right. I know that. But we have a lot of other chairs of other boards. Well, honestly, no one has expressed any any interest. So okay, all right, I I'll, I I will digress to no, saying no. that was your decision. Yeah. yeah, no, that's fine. I I mean, anybody is welcome, but 
no one else has volunteered to step up to help me decorate this. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's just, <laughs> as you know, we've had enough I know, yes. scuttlebutt I know, but... with commentary. And so we're just trying to keep everybody in a good place. Um, I, I understand. I it, We will be decorating. And if people want to decorate and be part of the float, they can come. Well, we just need to know who to announce. So that's where, okay. you know, we're Well, we're as far drafting. as I know, no one else has volunteered. And Okay. And as so we're just drafting a script of the things for okay. the review people to read um and talk about as certain contingencies are coming through. So, um not wanting to dismiss someone if they happen to arrive on your float, please let us know ahead of time so we can oh, make yeah. sure that Yes. People are, I mean, are obviously, aware. yeah, I, I will let you know, Holly. Okay. As far as I know, no one else is interested and no one else volunteered to do anything to decorate. Okay. So, okay. I'm all right. That's the key to getting onto the float. <laughs> you want to come, then you need to decorate. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, that was what Trevor was fussing about is that is like nobody is doing anything. And I said, honestly, you're correct. Nobody is doing anything. So we got to we got to up our game here between now and next week. But well, we're, we're going to do something. We'll have plenty. I'd, of li I'd like to use one of those colloquiums like uh, you're preaching to the choir, but I'm not going to go there. <sighs> it's, been, it's been long, but right now. We're enthusiastic, we're getting close, and the weather looks manageable. So I think I'm, I think I'm really excited. Good. Holly, there's so many people that are so excited and, and you talk to people, they're really excited about their floats. I mean, there's a lot of people participating. I think this there, is really there are there are. We have a good collection of groups and the high school and bands and floats. And so I think collectively it's going to come together. Yeah. I'm, I yep. think it's great. Yep. So I got an email from a friend of mine this morning. They're driving down from Concord, New Hampshire for it. Wow. Oh, wow. That's great. Excellent. Excellent. I'm, um, I'm, when, when we meet tomorrow night, we'll, um, we're going to go over some of the last minute stuff. Um, and then we're going to get, um, Kelly has been working on um, like a little mini version of a Google map that's going to have the parade route on it oh, and um, places where people can park and where there'll be bathrooms and handicapped bathrooms. And so trying to get some good collection of information out there. So that's good. Um, yep. Very so, good. yeah. It's going to be busy. We're meeting tomorrow, and then we're meeting Monday through Thursday every night next week. So uh, just to make sure we don't leave something undone. Holly, if you're meeting next um, every day next week, would you just come to our select board meeting at six o'clock and just do a little, you know, update? Um, I think we can probably pull that off. I think that was the, the plan. The date is again? The 14th. June 14th. Yeah, I just think it's just really great to have a little bit more excitement, talk about it. You know, just a little thing about um, it's coming together. I think it, it just makes people excited about it. Yep. There certainly is, I have to say, when I went go to the transfer station, there's posters up, there's posters around town. So hopefully people are going to remember to do that. <laughs> this is happening. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Um, I'll talk to Kelly about that. Um, I know last time you had to do the public comment first. Is there any way we could be before public comment? You could just be public comment. Oh, we could. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we could get. And I'm the on one first. that says says that you've done over two minutes, and I'll just not cut you off. That's all. Yeah. It's. I mean, the last time, obviously, it was important for us to share where we were at, but I think we went on like, I don't know, quarter past to twenty past, and 
because we're going to be meeting, I don't want to hold up our group either. No, no, you could just come as public comment. We usually, okay, don't, we usually don't have very much public comment, so. Okay, sounds good. Carolyn, what date's that? June 14th. It's, it's our select board meeting before um, the parade. Is, the, is that a Wednesday? Yes. Yeah. And I just, I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, that people got happy about it. And we'll know what the weather is for sure. And we can talk about it. And The weather's going to be good. I got yeah. Diane working on it. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm it's all going to be good right now. Well, it's great because it's unsettled right now, and then it will will have it will be our turn to have you know really beautiful weather again. I was getting nervous when we were having day after day after day of sunshine. I was thinking, oh my God, we're using up all our sunshine. But I would like it partly cloudy. Honestly, I want it to be a comfortable, enjoyable day for everybody. Yeah, it would actually um, be nice if it wasn't brilliant sun. But yeah, it, it's okay as long as we have. Um, not rain. The and current I for forecast is 84, a mix of clouds and sun with a slight chance of a storm. And that's going to be gone in the next few days. And then it's going to look beautiful. Yep. Excellent. I agree. Yep. That's all I have. All righty. Um... We're through the formal agenda, and I just wanted to give you a brief update on the mural. Um, Judith uh, sent over a preliminary draft uh, for her proposed uh, ceramic uh, mur mural. And I gave her a couple of suggestions, but overall, I think it's a wonderful piece of artwork. Very nice. And, and I shared it with Diane, too. I, she ha I happen to be going over there. so. She liked it too, and so what she's going to do is uh, finish a colored version of it, and then she'll send it to me, and I'll send it to the steering committee for review and okay. comment. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I was very impressed. The different layers of history she included in her pictures. Very, very impressed with uh, the detail. Actually. Um, I think I think that's really exciting to tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll make a nice addition yeah. to the the three fifty event, and and it'll continue on on the town hall, and we'll we'll figure out somehow we'll, to frame it and then mount it, and then have the ability to move it if we renovate the eighteen eighty eight building at some point. Um, well, how how big will it be? She um, said originally three by four or something like that. Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit bigger than that, but not by much. It's like maybe four and a half or something like that. You know, but yeah, in, in it, that in that uh, zone, and I, Kevin, I think Kevin it's going to really, be. I think it's going to be nice enough to put that in the town report too. So we should we'll get a photograph of right of that to go in with the record. Kevin said we'll figure it out once we figure out the, what the actual weight is and not to worry about it, we'll figure it out. Even if we have to put supports a little bit underneath it. Yeah, that, you know. that, that works. I mean, you just put yeah. two posts underneath it to hold it. That's, yeah, that's, actually that's what he said. If, 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 it's too, if it's too heavy, for, because it's yeah. a brick facade. Right, it, right. You know, it's yeah. not really that expensive construction at the town hall. So, the, you know, the old school. So um, he was worried about it pulling out eventually. So we might have to do something like that, but he said not to worry about it till he got the actual weight and then we'll yep. sort out what would be the best support system. Yeah. And that would be also ability to move it if we cho choose to move it somewhere. Yeah. No, I think that's a practical idea. Um, because I jumped on late, I had asked for the tables for um, our, for local groups at our events. Did that get talked about? Yeah. Um, yeah, we we I I got asked by Valley Neighbors. Uh, I did too. Yeah, and so I told them I didn't see any problem with it because it's definitely you know helping seniors age in place is definitely a good you know organization. So I felt that the Friends of Deerfield. No one was on here from Friends of Deerfield, but I I was assuming that Friends of Deerfield would have a table selling you know, whatever merchandise there was 
you know, um, t-shirts and bag uh -huh. glasses or whatever. And so wherever they're setting up, we could put tables, like if the women's club or somebody wanted to put tables up besides Valley Neighbors, we would do it wherever the Friends of Deerfield is going to be setting up, probably. Okay, but which which days? Um, I I assume that it would be after the parade at the okay. elementary school. Okay, at the elementary and school. I didn't I didn't know if anybody really wanted to do it at the barbecue because it's not, uh, you know, people uh, they're coming to eat and then they're leaving and it's a different group. They're, I mean, Valley Neighbors was looking for volunteers, so. It's not to say that you wouldn't get volunteers at the barbecue, but I think their best choice would be that Saturday after the parade. I think that um because people think, kind of be they, milling, they've, milling they've, around. they've come to talk to the women's club in twofold. I, I think people don't know enough about them. And so they are looking for volunteers, but at the same time, they're looking for um, people to know more about them. So if there does need to be a referral, um, so I think it's twofold with them. So they they will probably like to be informational. Um, let me just see yeah, what he yeah. said. Um, he just said at Deerfield 350 events, he didn't expressly say, he said set up at or near the parade or elsewhere. Okay, I guess during that day. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to Fran. Okay, thanks. Yeah, he he, he's, he's a board of health chair from Waitley, you know, yep. known for years. And so it's it's totally legit, Holly. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to do that, but I didn't want to, he asked the question and I had replied that yeah. we would bring it up tonight. So Holly, the way we left it is that I'm, I'm, I'm going to contact friends of Deerfield and tell them that there may be one or more organizations that would like to set up a table and figure out a way to accommodate that at the post parade event. Yeah, what, what, if, what if they bring their own table? That's fine. I, in fact, I would encourage anybody. Oh, who yes. Really wants no, to everybody it, needs to bring their, their own, own table. table. Yeah. But yeah. There'll, so, there'll be a place for them. Yeah. Okay. So we're, you're just clarifying where the place will be, but it's okay for me to tell Fran that he can do yeah, this. So you can tell yeah. him, but the other thing was that Carolyn wanted to make sure that everybody and his brother didn't request a table. So the idea was if other people want to set up a table, they should come to me and, and ask permission. And then I- If Peter felt, it's just, it's Holly, it's just like the waivers in this day and age, you can't, do a blanket waiver. You just got to have individuals, you know, I mean, we've not turned down anyone for a waiver, but it, you know, you just want to know who it is. So the same thing is just, you know, if somebody wants to put a table up just between now and the parade day, we don't really have any more meetings. So Peter, I mean, we felt, I feel comfortable. Peter would know if it's legit okay. organization uh, or not. Yeah. I don't have anybody else asking. So it's okay for me to just reply to Fran. Yes, nope. yes. Nope. I, okay. I just didn't know where Fran was going to set up. And I was hoping to find out from friends of Deerfield where their table was going to be. And then Fran could set up near their table. But well, I don't... they're going to they're going to probably just have to ask when they get there. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, it's kind of in it, where is stuff getting set up at the elementary school? Which that, side? You know, that field that ball field side, the, the ball, ball field, field side, side. closest yeah. to Frontier. Oh, OK. Okay, that's good. Uh, and that's what I'll do is when I when I get a hold of Chris or or Stan to find out where they're going to put up their table and, and talk to them about other people joining them, I'll give you a call and let you know where. Okay. Uh, where oh, that would be wonderful, Peter, because then Fran then Fran would know, and he's not like yeah. walking around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that'll be good. I'll figure that out. Thank you. Appreciate it. And, and Holly, the other thing that we were talking about, Peter, had, had, and um, came up with um, working with PVMA to do the Polish um, celebration in the fall. It's going to be really great. Yeah, yeah. Peter, he, you, I, you I, want... I stopped over. He filled me in today. Oh, good. Because yeah. I think that's going to be wonderful. Yeah, that would be really nice. And and the dates on that, Peter, again? 
October 13th and 14th. Okay. Oh, Thank you. 14th, 14th and 15th. 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 14th and 15th. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Getting married on the 13th. <laughs> and Okay, great. And so we so we have two events in the fall. We have the half marathon, and then we have um, hopefully this PVMA thing will pan out. And so I feel like our calendar is really well balanced. Peter will have uh, another historic talk in um, September, October, and November. So yeah. I, I feel three, yeah, three more. So I feel like our whole year we have a calendar year that we're filling up. When, when's the half marathon? September 17th. Sunday, September 17th. Is that Crafts Fair weekend? No, the Crafts Fair weekend is the weekend afterwards. Okay, okay. Okay, good. I, okay. I know that because we've already done some of the... Yeah, the Crafts Fair weekend is the 23rd and 24th. Okay. Good. It usually is that we can have a adjournment. Yeah. Oh, so moved. Right. Second. All those in favor? Aye, okay. Holly. Carolyn, aye. Okay, we're adjourned at, my God, 732.